Hi boys and girls, so we are back tonight with another wonderful guest as you can see and today we have Just Dip. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> He's from Southern California. Yes ma'am. Ah, well thank you for coming all the way to the Funky J Cafe. Oh no, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, truly, truly. well we appreciate you coming. So how long have you been in Atlanta? No, since about 2009 honestly. Oh really? Yeah, off and on. I came out for school originally to go to Clark Atlanta and um, just kind of got comfortable and you know, made my way. How long have you been rapping? I, I mean quote unquote professionally since like 2013 but um, I've been doing it since I was uh, 15, 16 years old. Wow, That's okay. Cool. So what is it like out in California? Do y'all sit on the block and freestyle? Ah, it's crazy. I was just man, that's wild you said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, sitting on the block is a very, very, very common thing. Um, I used to do it with my pops. Um, I used to do it with the big homies, you know what I mean? When I go back home, me and pops kick it. Like he smokes the cigars, we'll drink our wine. Really? And get back. Yeah, oh cool. wow, so is that where you got it from? I think so. That's I cool. think so. What part is South Carolina? We lived in Northridge till I was like 12. No, no, that's LA. So that's probably about two. I, I live in a place called the High Desert now. I'm originally from San Diego. Um, I grew up in Southeast San Diego till uh, it was time to go to high school. And then we moved out to a place called the High Desert in the Inland Empire. And um, that's basically like two hours from Northridge. Okay. So oh, okay. I have some friends who graduated from there. And, you know, the commute back home is no problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember we were there for like the 95 earthquake. Okay. 6.01, yeah. Ooh, I was a little young, young boy back then. <laughs> yeah, I was too. I was a baby. But being out here, what is, is it real different from California? Um, it was a culture shock initially when I came out, but it, I mean, I thank God for actually being able to be in a school setting, you know, it was like a melting pot of all these people from different places, so you get acclimated to the environment really quick. So it definitely grew on me, because here I am seven, eight years later, I'm still here, so. Yeah. So when you came here, were you like just still rapping for fun or did you come knowing like okay i'm gonna try to like make it in the industry um and like in the back of my mind i knew like i made a decision to actually come to atlanta uh because it was quote unquote black hollywood mm -hmm. but when i first got out here i did the college boy thing you know i was invited involved in like student government i was on the track team and stuff like that but um i knew what i wanted to do and after a while it, just, it got hard to focus on anything other than that okay and you know here we are yeah well i heard some of your music it's really dope it's so. a fair song I don't have one. It's okay. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I mentioned the fashion show. The one that you did at the fashion show was the one that made me interested into you. So, um, your manager sent me over some good stuff. So, I heard your music is pretty dope. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For cool, cool. Um, so, how do you feel about your vibe? Like, do you see yourself in the same trend as others? Do you see yourself trying to master out of others? Um, man, that's really a tough question. Honestly, for the most part, I just... I get really into myself when it comes to making the music and you know I try not to concentrate on other things going on but I know I do identify with a lot of people in the hip hop culture. Um, I do realize I, I, the music that I'm making and I have made um, would do okay in a mainstream environment however I identify with the independent underground artists you know that's my whole all my affiliations all, everybody I work with comes from the underground but um, I think that's just like the mindset you should keep in, into this landscape of music is to keep that independent underground uh, mindset when you're going into what you're doing and if somebody wants to put up the cash for you to go mainstream do it and run with it but uh, i like think i fit in i sit on occasion so it ain't no wonder why my mama a little disappointed but my daddy proud popping up in my small hometown summer coming i can't be found okay to say the stock is changing keep keeping money well and die this ain't attractive in, but I think about the time I spend just riding around with my AC blown, smoking weed like my whip at 10, speakers knocking late night shift, empty bottle, let me ask that quick, then back into them thoughts, and shorty ass is sweet as best to quit, when you get tired of being broke, that's how you know it's time, around the point where aggression and hunger coincide, lyrical homicide, here's an it IVI, sweet and good and you niggas is on that Ramadan, exhausted your options, I cause this rapping phenomenon, left you a couple the reasons the Philly losing his mind. I'm still breathing, I'm fine. I'm too young to retire, too cold to expire. Simply the last of my kind. <laughs> but I'm just Malcolm in the middle. Play the game with the fiddle, thanking God for a little. Huh? I knew that since the days when I was little. Back then they didn't get them. Now we hot, so now they will. So you should sign the petition, cause this is how it's gonna be. You take a second and listen. In the real, you gon' see we've been at it too long. It's no room for cold feet. I see a prophet and rapping, and I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And 
I'ma need the whole thing. I see you profit and rapping, and I'ma need the whole thing. Huh? I'm just a misfit with reckless abandon, trying to make a heap of rubble out of foot. All right, well, who have you worked with? No, I mean, just the homies. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, I worked with uh, some cool people around the city, uh, in the Atlanta area, and some people back in Orange County. But, um, you know, uh, to me, they're credible and notable people. But as far as, um, you know, well known, mm -hmm. I, don't, I haven't done any major features. Okay. But we're, we're looking to change that this go around. Yeah, you're on your way. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. That's cool. Well, um, as far as yourself, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What what is it that that made you who you are? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, man, I'm a, I'm just a dirty ghetto kid from Southern California. I'm a middle child. I got an older sister, younger sister. You know, I'm blessed to have my parents still together to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been rocking out like 30 years. You know, through the good and the bad, and oh, that so pretty much nice. yeah, truly. And that pretty much just you know that's all I, that's what I do it for. Like that whole um, family aspect is what I bring to everything I do. It's why I do what I do, and um, I don't know. I don't know, That's man. Cool. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty simple, man. Pretty, pretty open back. book. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you got a good support team. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It makes really? no sense. Like it's almost, it's almost overwhelming how much support I, I have. So because I've done some things and been some places yeah. to where to know that I had that much support is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, but I think I'm supposed to get that back. You know, all that love I'm giving me, I'm just supposed to give it back to the world. So. That's what we're gonna work on doing. All right. Well, being who you are and making moves on your way up the ladder in the industry, from what you've already experienced, is it what you thought? Hmm. Um. I wasn't really prepared for. You know, you hear about people, rappers are talking about, oh yeah, everybody fake, everybody blah yeah. blah blah. You be like, man, it's just whatever. That's just exaggerated. You ain't got no haters. Until you get in the midst of it and you realize there's a lot of politics that go into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know. I mean, of course, the world, everybody's out for themselves. Everyone's ruthless out here, but for the most part, it's just so interesting how, like, these facades that people put on, not I hate to be cliche, but it's like, if you're popping on social media, when you talk to these people, you swear, like, they believe this in their souls. Mm -hmm. Like, you may have 12,000 followers, but, like, bro, like, you're not even really cool like that. And I don't, I'm not, I don't have a hard to tell anybody that, because, I mean, I'm nobody. I'm not popping either, but that's amazing. That's something I had to get used to was, um... You know the 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 popularity contest or the fashion show everything turns into that's pretty interesting too. Yes, but it couldn't just be man. I'm a dirty ghetto kid from SoCal. I don't even know how to keep my shoes clean. I've been skating my whole life. And <laughs> you skate too? Yeah, yeah, off and on. So. Okay. <laughs> so I mean that's weird for me. That's cool. well to actually think back on what you're saying about I, what I've noticed from just interviewing and meeting people. The ones that don't have a lot of followers are the ones that's really making the money. That's what I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. You know, because like the ones that are so popular, they're so they're doing anything just for that that flash, right, right, just right. to look good on it. But the money is not really coming in for you, because you know what I mean. That's what I've noticed. And I respect the promo. Like I of wish, course. I wish you know my promo, I could do it the same way they do, or you know I was into it as much as they were, because you know that probably helped me out in a lot of different ways. But I'm just not. I don't know how to do that. Like I don't. I like. I'm just like I said, I get really into me and my peoples and what we're trying to do. We want to make good music. We want to get the music packaged and complete thoughts and you know, the people who want it, they're gonna they're gonna find it. One thing I learned early on is that you make good music and you stay true to yourself and people will let you know if you're worth their time. And so if it takes a while, we'll plant our grassroots and do that. But I believe I agree, because you know, when you're doing something you don't really have time for all that. Really that's social media. <laughs> Unless you have somebody following behind you, a publicist that's taking pictures and post you know what I mean? Shout out to the team. Yeah, exactly. That's what it, that's what it's all about. But um so listen, you being in Atlanta, are are you single? Yeah. You sing okay. So what is it like? Because you know it's like a grown man's playground, especially being a red rapper. Uh, she called me that just now? Did that that's that really happened? That happened. Oh man. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> I ain't never heard that before. Oh. <laughs> you know it's real though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's it like for you? Is it like the stereotype that everybody says, like 16 women to one man? How's that for you? I mean, they out here, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Politically <laughs> correct answer. <laughs> you know, but like I said, we really focused on the music. And, uh, so you turn these baddies down, don't you tell me? What, man? I I'll be really busy. I'll be okay, busy. I started having groupies at the uh, fashion show. Most of my groupies, they were there to enjoy good music. Okay, and, you right. know, to look at the new fashion trends that's going on. <laughs> uh, things in Atlanta. But Bob, it's your music hard as hell, though. I mean, I mean it's kind of good. It is good. You know what but, I mean? I yeah. think they're just genuine fans. Uh huh. He's good at these answers. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. That's cool. I just wanted to know how is it for you. Pretty sure it's yeah, it's a it's a little smooth. bit of environment. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. You gotta keep your head on straight. You gotta stay focused. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it's cool to pick and choose. I think you know keeping things exclusive and um, making sure that any you don't do anything for no reason, don't have no reason people around you is essential, especially when you believe in where you want to go and what you want to do. If you truly feel like you want to live a certain lifestyle, you need to start planning for that very early and surrounding yourself with people that are conducive to that uh, campaign. So, you know, what I mean, we turn down and we accept what we're supposed to turn down and what we're supposed to accept. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what kind of woman would you want on your team? Oh um, man, I just. Like on my, we mean on my. What, what team are we talking about? All teams. In, <laughs> what time is it? Uh, it's about that time. Nah, but um, I just I, I hate to say I hate to say like you know you want people around you who have things to lose. You just want people. Who, like I said, I'm really into myself, and I want everybody else around themselves to be really into themselves. You just want people conducive to the campaign. You want motivated, driven people, you know, ambitious people, self-sufficient individuals, you know what I mean? Yeah. Polished people who, you know, understand that the longer you, you, you're you around someone and you're dealing with someone, that you are an extension of them to, to a certain point. And as long as everybody has everyone's best interests at heart, you know, we're working towards a common goal or just progress in general, that works for me. Okay. Good answer. That's cool. Appreciate That's it. cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me, what is your favorite song that you have done? Oh, man. And why? I think it originally used to be the song called Rocks on Pavement. Because uh -huh. I was in the mud. Like, things was all kinds of bad. Like, um, I didn't have a bed in my room. I just had a microphone, my old lady's laptop, and, like, I was just in there scheming things up, doing drugs and acting regulars. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this song, man. It was... It, like in 10 minutes the beat came on and we kicked that out and it basically just told me in a nutshell that's who I was from like the age of 19 to 22 23 like I was that song and you know it, it spoke it was like theme music to my life so that was probably my favorite but then when we worked on the recent album shout out to the knee project you guys should get that in the middle of May dot today as in I'm in the middle of I made a cake dot today um I did a song called tracksuits Okay. Um, tracks is awesome. I mean, it's the it's like a minute long, one verse, one hook, and it just basically just meant we you know we were putting foot to pavement, and we were getting right. And I love that song. Okay. Um, you know, and I think when you hear that song, you, I hate for, I, hate to say it like that, but I mean you you hear me, you hear it inside of me when you hear that song. Really? Yeah. So. Okay. That's why I kept it short and to the point. It's a quick jab. Okay. That's what's up. Well, real quick, tell me I guess how they can follow you and reach you. Um, we'll start with like Instagram. Just my name, Devance, D-I-V-A-N-C-E. Um, Twitter is Devance with a W at the end of it. Uh, or you can just follow me on, you can just follow the campaign at Middle of May, M-I-D-D-L-E of May. Um, or just go to the site, Middle of May dot today, not dot com, not dot org, today. Um, mm -hmm. Check it out. That's a one-stop shop. You can get your merchandise. You can get all the visuals, um, the music. All the above, it's all set there, the bio's there. So anything you're looking for, that's a central location for the campaign. So Okay, cool. Now you said merchandise, you have your own fashion line as well? Uh, I won't say fashion line, but um, you know, we we make the neat tees. Like I said, the project was called Neat and um so we started promoing as such. Um mm -hmm. and that's all under the middle of the made imprint. Uh so we do all we make all our apparel through. And um, cause I mean I worked for a merchandise company for about a year and I just got really into product in general and graphic design and from there, I just, we started pushing these shirts. You know, my, uh, my artist development team was like, yo, like, run with that, because it also works image-wise. Okay. You know, so um, I have to get you one. Did, as yeah, well. definitely. I'll wear it. Did you do the hat as well? No, this is actually, I was at a show recently at the goat farm, and there was a, a cat out there. He's doing really well for himself. Y'all shout out to him. Um, his Instagram is at Fuck Your Fashion. Um, he was just giving out merch, you know, he sold over $25, and, you know, people come up to me and they buy my knee tees and they don't even listen to the song, so I always make sure I support it. Yeah. He has a good campaign, and I don't know. I, 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 the hat feels good, it fits well. You know what I mean? It's dope. Mm -hmm. I like it. Thank it's you, good. thank you. Yeah, so I like the shirt too, though. I like the black on black. Yeah, yeah. Those, that's why I don't let nobody get these. No, I'm not the black on black. I'm the only one with the black on black. Oh, they're like cold, they're okay. crispy. You can get one though. Okay, I, I'm gonna say, well, I want the black and black. That's kind of dope. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right, sir. So tell me where you see yourself in like five to ten years. Oh, man. 
five years. Let's start with two. Okay, let's do that. In two years, I'm supposed to finish this program for art direction and advertisement in general. Basically, my goal is to come up with the coldest portfolio that I could actually, you know, do consulting and um, freelance work on. You know, that's in two years from now. By that point, we should be able to honestly be on the road four to six months out of the year. Okay. You know, we need to be making about five to ten bands on these shows because we rock shows and we need the world to know this. We need them to put up their money for it. And, you know, I want to be able to re release music as needed. Um, you know, not. I don't want to ever be pressured or forced and in a position where you know somebody's trying to a label's trying to milk a single out of me. I just want my people to be situated. You know, everyone is playing at their grassroots in their own aspects, and I just really want to travel, hit the road, and perform. You know, because um, I really, honestly, I would sign a deal. Don't I, I have no problem signing a major deal if it was conducive for my family and it changed my life immediately. However, um, we just want some distribution and we just want people to want to book us. If we got to do 250 shows a year, we will. Hey, hey. we in the bottles for missing the mess. Hey, I've been with it off the rip, do you even got a quest? Hey, they speak in this sound as it sound like a blast. Hey, cause if a nigga got an issue, I can recommend the rev. Oh, man. Yes, right on back on the cabin. Give my ex a couple kids and live at home with my mama. Y'all know damn when I'm wildin'. Cause I think homegirl is silent. She might ride me like silent. And we might miss the whole party. Back my party if I'm on the same regardless. I'm just wildin'. I'm just drunk and I probably should have been with all of these niggas that's here from New Orleans. I think I might have to stop, stop. Cause I think a boyfriend a cop And my heart would just have to literally stop If I woke up again in that penalty box I swear, I swear. But what the fuck do you expect, little nigga? It was TGK to the death, little nigga I'm a rep till it ain't nothing left, little nigga Cause if you was a nigga, you'd probably shoot at the nigga Wouldn't leave your old lady in the room with the nigga I mean, you would not know what you should do with the nigga You'd be like, babe, here, screw the nigga, hold up Shout out to the vlog, shout out to you know, the medias and the journalists who um, are honestly doing most of the stuff for free and, you know, who are the voice of the people in the underground, especially these independent artists that we're killing ourselves just to get people to pay attention, so. Yeah, that's what's up. Well, um, listen, sir, I really don't want to hold you too much longer. <laughs> I really do appreciate you coming out and doing everything you can for yourself and your team. You seem like you have a wonderful team behind you, so yeah. shout out to them. They're sitting awesome. here as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool so um i have a segment it's called word for word okay okay so i'm going to ask you one word you tell me the first word that comes to mind okay okay money boom okay um uh, hustles boom uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not supposed to anticipate the word oh, i'm gonna say boom again and see she let us move i thought she was gonna start knocking them out mm -hmm. like boom no and today <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> Tuesday, like, what's up? <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. Hustle. Every day. Family. Sleep. Fame. Wait, sleep. Yeah, you, you can't question it. The first word comes to mind. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> um, fame. Long distance. Spirituality. God. Black. Chains. White. James. Revolution. Tomorrow. Um, music. Open. Love. Transparent. And yourself. Devance, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this guy did. How y'all doing? It's a pleasure. <laughs> Well, thank you, sir, so much for coming out to the Funky J. We do appreciate you coming out and sitting with us. Definitely. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can to help you plug your music. Um, like I said, I did hear I met him at a fashion show. He had his music going. He had the models walking. He had the groupies singing. He had it all. So yeah. I had to plug it's an it exaggeration. out. Exaggeration. <laughs> Let me ask you, when the, um, was the first time you got on stage? Ooh, I, I performed at Cal State Northridge. Really? There was like, uh, there was a, they, Hands for Africa did a charity event, and for, I don't know what happened, I think I was working on my first album ever, um, I was 19, and my engineer was like, I got this gig at Cal State Northridge, you go up there, you can perform as long as you want, do whatever records you want, man, work the kinks out, you know, I'm geek spook, I spent the whole time staring at the floor just rapping, mm. just making sure I get all the words out, you know what I mean, and that was the first time I ever like got on stage and really like, yo, I'm a rapper, here I am. Yeah. So was you really, really nervous? Oh yeah, it was crazy. We were like 
chugging uh, sweet tea vodka in the bathroom oh. just to shake the nerves off. Mm. It was interesting. I, I think I even asked my mom for a, a volume before, mm. I, before I left. It was bad. It was bad. It was what crazy. is it for you now? I mean, I, I mean, I just before I go, I, one thing I realized is you got to embrace the nerves. Like you, the day I, I stop being nervous is the day I want to stop performing. Like I go, I just take my my moment. In the midst of it, it's like it's like when you're running track right before the gun pops. You, your heart is beating in your ears. You're really nervous, but it's that moment right before I walk on stage. That's bad. I just bow my head. You know, I say my prayers and I thank you know God for the opportunity to have this platform. And then the moment I get on stage, that's all gone. I just start smiling. Mm. And we just start rapping. Okay. We just start. We just start doing. <laughs> Well, as y'all know, I will have all his information screened below so you can contact him, link him, plug him. Can people, if they wanted you to come out and book you, that same information, email, how do they contact you with that? How does that work? Oh, Jones Music Group, LLC at gmail.com. Um, your contact is TJ. Reach out um, and you'll, we'll hit you back with all kinds of information. Okay. Anything you need to know. Like I said, Jones Music Group, LLC at gmail.com. Okay, and people are, they you're cool with book, getting booked and things like that? Oh yeah, I'm completely open to that. Um, you know, but I, I would say book me now. Okay. Well, you heard it right from him, so. <laughs> and again, we thank you, give you homage, and I look forward to seeing everything that you're doing. You got to come back in six months. That's the only thing that I ask. Oh, no problem. I mean, I think that's album time. That's out. Yeah, six it's months. About six months to be dropping? Oh, yeah. We're looking at end of June or going into July. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're coming we're back. We're time? coming back. Okay, we hot, summertime, fine, all that good stuff. We cut up. That's cool. How many songs you plan to have on your album? See, I don't want to restrict myself. We six in now though. Okay. So that's good too. Is that I'm, much? You know what? I'm gonna say this. I did not know. You know, growing up, we used to mess with dope boys. They'd be like, "Oh, we're in the studio." I'm like, "You ain't in no studio for hours." Mm -hmm. So I went down there and sat and see what goes into just one song. Whew, that's real. So six songs. I mean, how long y'all been working on that? Oh man, it's my time. I mean, we got a formula how we do. Oh this. really? All okay. right. If we gonna go into the studio, I'm not gonna waste anybody's time. If I'm in the studio, I got a general idea where I'm going. Either I have all the verses that need to beat, or I got the beat and the ver. I, I'm gonna go in there with the entire blueprint, the meat and potatoes. Okay. And if anything, I'm gonna cut it. And then I trust my team. Like I only work with the same people, so I leave it with them. Okay. I know how to leave it with them, and come back. And if they have any updates on it, that's cool. Um, I give my input. I let them know how I'm feeling about it, where we can go in a direction. But for the most part, like I think it's really good to play your role and create. And then let people who want to sit there and structure the stuff and package it, who like, you know, have a love for that and have honestly the patience and the time to do it, to put that together. I don't go to a lot of people, but I'll go record somewhere else and then bring it back to my engineer and just give them everything and then come back and you'll have the project done. Okay. So. so like, does it work for you? Like, if you hear a beat, then you write to that, or you write and they just bring a beat to what you're writing? Um, I get a lot of beats. Uh, I work. I got a cool production team that consists of about three to four people, and um, they submit me beats throughout the seasons. Okay. And when I get them, I write. I can write to something and use it for another record later. But they're constantly giving me inspiration. And, um, I got some really good friends that are good at sending me different music. They just send me off the wall random music, so I'm not getting caught up in the same monotonous things you may hear on like the radio and so forth. And um, that just keeps me on my toes, keep the juices flowing. So. Do you listen to the radio? No, honestly, no. Okay. I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so.
I'm not against it though. I actually just became a Young Thug fan. You know what I'm saying? How? I just heard this song called Power. I have to hear it. His right music now. videos are awesome too. His create creative team is phenomenal. That song Power is crazy, and that video is you. Can oh, we watch it right now? We, Let's pull it up. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a really good video. And I mean, I just, Young Thug's cool as a creative and an artist. He's awesome. I just don't agree with anything that comes out of his mouth. When he's not rapping, or even when he's rapping half the time, he's talking about beating people and all kinds of crazy stuff. He's like, beat her and then call him back the next day. But it sounds dope on the beat. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's all about the beat when, yeah. for the young generation. But I don't know. The only time I can really have to really sit down and focus on his music to understand what he's saying, and I don't like that. I think there's a, I think there's a, a trick to it. I think it, there's, a, there, they're doing something because he's a complete artist. He's a complete package as an artist. I just don't get who they're trying to reach or who they're talking to. You know, I don't know. I, we weren't built like that. We don't do that. I don't know what you got going on. That's not for us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's for the new generation. It's the way they, they get down. I mean, you know, we grew up on like 8-Ball and Outkast, you know, like... Yeah, my dad used to play, like, it was Ice Cube. There was like a two years of my life where the only rap CD he played was the Friday soundtrack. Really? Yeah. Like, okay. I'm talking, my first hip-hop song was like Chin Check by N.W.A. Really? Yeah, that's, that's the joint right there. With Snoop was on and everything. So is that what kind of like was your like alley? Like is that how your music first went? No, nah, it was Eminem. Okay. Eminem took over my brain. Oh really? Okay. okay. After I hit like puberty and like start, I started getting weird and stuff like that. Yeah. And, oh yeah, that dude just took over my whole brain and that's um that's my favorite rapper honestly to date. And okay. Yeah. If you were young, like if you was in this generation right now, who do you think you would listen to? Or? Oh man. J. Cole would be like Jesus. I know he's your age. Yeah, he would be like Jesus to me. I probably like I probably would like Kendrick a little more. You think so? Yeah. I mean I mean, Kendrick's cool, but he's not my favorite rapper. I would never even I probably couldn't even listen to a whole Kendrick album. And it's not because 'cause I'm not a diehard hip hop fan. I'm, a, I'm like I'm a I'm a hip hop junkie, but I'm just like he's he cool. <laughs> His album was to me like a story. Yeah, yeah you know, it's cool. Like it's cool road trip music. You can play it while you're, yeah. you're carrying on with your people and driving. But it's not like I'm not gonna sit there and just you know. ride to it to the club. But that J Cole, I'll sit there and rap every word. Or a Nipsey Hustle project. Like I, re I recently just got all I listen to now was the Marathon and Crenshaw. Okay, I haven't heard so I'm not gonna even pretend like I. Have. I'll take it like this. Um, I probably work sixteen hours out the day. Okay. I'm one to go, and that's all I ever have in my headphones. It's better than caffeine. For real? Yeah, man. He just makes money for young young people to be getting touching cash too. He makes music for young cats to touch money too. That's okay. it. And to get right, get up and do something. Do nothing people don't like Nipsey Hussle because he makes them feel some type uh, of about themselves. I see <laughs> what you mean. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check him out though. Let's see what's up. Um, I'm gonna check out the video. You have to check it out. It's called Power though. Yeah, yeah. Man. I, I know I'm just going over time. I'm just out here. You fine? Stuff. You I told you I was going. I ran out of questions. Have a good time. It's all good. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I ran out of things. That's so shit. I mean, you know, we can talk about it, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. <laughs> no, but it's truly a pleasure. We thank you for having us. Yes, 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 yes. Like I said, six months, got to come back, got to do what you got to do. Losing earrings, so I'll take the other one off. <laughs> but my lovely guest, we thank you for letting us come into your wonderful world again with this wonderful man who, as you can see, is just making way. So, tune him. Plug in, check with them, see what you can do, and I will see y'all next week.
I sin on occasion, so it ain't no wonder why. My mama a little disappointed, but my daddy proud. Popping up in my small hometown, summer coming, I can't be found. Okay, to say the stock is changed and keep your money well and die. This ain't attractive end, but I think about the time I spend just riding around with my AC blown. Smoking weed like my whip at 10, speakers knocking late night shift. Empty bottle, let me ask that quick, then back into them thoughts. And shorty ass is sweet as Nestle quit. When you get tired of being broke, that's how you know it's time. Around the point where aggression and hunger coincide. Lyrical homicide, here's an it IVI. It's weed and good, and you niggas is on that Ramadan. Exhausted your options, I cause this rapping phenomenon left you a good of the reasons to feel he losing his mind I'm still breathing, I'm fine I'm too young to retire Too cold to expire Simply the last of my kind <laughs> But I'm just Malcolm in the middle Play the game with the fiddle Thanking God for a little high I knew that since the days when I was little Back then they didn't get them Now we hot, so now they will So you high. should sign the petition Cause this is how it's gonna be You take a second and listen In the real you gon' see We've been at it too long It's no room for cold feet I see a prophet and rapping And I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And I'ma need the whole thing, huh? And I'ma need the whole thing I see a prophet and rapping and I'ma need the whole thing high. I'm just a misfit with reckless abandon Trying to make a heap of rubble Out of foot of elastic Living lavish in a bubble Full of places my past been Put my best chuck forward Ain't no room for a has-been So I, I say a prayer for my hip-hop head As I, I lie awake in my hip-hop bed She play patiently waiting in my hip-hop dreads I, Give me a script for these hip-hop meds Cause I was raised by a cynic My point of view was a critic You had the heart of a Leo And then divide up the figures and get exactly what you knew this was missing a little A1 caked up Spit it, who does it? It ain't a question about it <laughs> I mean I does this Yeah, that young suburban boy, I love this shit That Stussy knew the click Who in hell was you fucking with? Then made my way to D.C. to Miami Back to Cali, kid I'm just a misfit with reckless abandon Trying to make a heap of rubble Out of foot of elastic Living lavish in a bubble Full of places my past been Put my best chuck forward Ain't no room for for it has been so I, I say a prayer for my hip hop head Cause I, I lie awake in my hip hop bed She play patiently waiting in my hip hop dreads uh, Give me a script for these hip hop meds uh. Hip hop meds uh. Give me a script for these hip hop meds Yeah, yeah. That's just the gist of it. <laughs> Pants are pissed, but the kids love it. <laughs> Real talk, I always wanted to say that.